Mr. Mark Selby, how are you, sir? Mr. Matthew Gordon, doing very, very well. I'm glad to hear it. Now, you've been traveling the world. Safe travels? All good? All good. Yeah, no, I was, I was in uh, uh, South Korea last week. Uh, we're basically kicking off uh, the next phase in terms of the overall financing package. So spent some good time with uh, Samsung SDI and then with a number of other uh, players in the, in the battery supply chain and OEMs. And uh, yeah, no, it's good. I mean, as I've been saying all along, um, you know, the, these guys need a multiple of what I could produce in terms of clean, green, IRA compliant nickel. And uh, yeah, they remain as keen as ever. So, which is great. Right. Okay. Okay. And so what are other options actually? He's just thinking about, you know, they're looking to Canada, obviously. Is there much else on the table for them? No, no, it's pretty, it's pretty tricky. I mean, the other bigger projects in Canada, um, you know, other than potentially Dumont, you know, are, are, you know, out beyond 2030. Uh, so uh, nothing coming on the latter half of this decade. Uh, I am not sure whether Brazil qualifies as free trade agreement, you know, in terms of IRA uh, compliance. Um, it's definitely sort of on the, on the, on the right side of the, you know, China equation. Um, but, but I'm not sure whether they're fully IRA compliant or not. So, you know, and, uh, and uh, not a lot in terms of new, new stuff coming online in Australia. So yeah, no, we're, we're in a, it's a, uh, you know, it's it's good to be in a group of one in terms of large scale projects that can come on well before the end of the decade. Well, Brazil's doomed now. Elon's Elon's at war with Brazil, so uh, we'll see how that plays out. Uh, <laughs> freedom of speech. Um, now, talking of uh, freedom of speech, let let, let us let us uh, talk about nickel prices. So we we it, it kind of regressed somewhat last time we spoke a couple of weeks ago. How are we doing this week? Yeah, so we bounced back for a second week in a row um, up. Uh, almost uh, over 17,800 per ton or well over $8 a pound. So we've almost, you know, we, we, we ripped about 12%, gave up almost three quarters of that. And now we're almost, you know, three quarters of the way back um, to that uh, near term high uh, that we hit. Um, you know, what, what helped light a fire under the entire complex uh, was uh, Chinese PMIs. Uh, were higher than expected and not only higher than expected in actually positive territory for the first time in, in quite a while. So basically, you know, th that day you saw all of the base metal moves about 2% higher um, and nickel had already been moving, moving, moving back up again. So, um, you know, it's continued to propel it forward. We're seeing copper up over $9,000 a ton. You know, we talked a while back about some of the signs that I look for and, and it looked like China, you know, copper was going to make a move higher. Um, and we've seen that, you know, I, I think, you know, from here, I, I think, uh, as I said, we will, we'll probably, you know, end up, you know, treading water in this range for a little while. We'll need to see some more fundamental signs of improved markets and, and or market tightness to come through to, to make the next move higher. But, you know, you know, by and large, um, you know, we're, we're, we're sort of heading in the right direction, you know, as I expect post uh, Chinese New Year. Right. And so th this PMI or uh, Personal Managers Index, um, what what are the kind of the key things that drive that? We, we've got some indicators there which kind of reflect on the space that we're, we're talking about. What was what, it uh, measured on, do you know? Yeah. So PMIs look at a whole basket of, of, of sort of surveys from, in you know the basically uh, you know the supply chain in terms of you know orders inventories backlog shipments and so forth prices and so forth and so you know across a range of indicators you know uh, you know these the way these things are designed is that above fifty you know means to say that business is improving you know below fifty business is declining and so uh, you know the Chinese PMIs have been sort of stuck. Um, below 50 for quite a while, you know, reflecting kind of the, you know, pretty mediocre set sentiment across broader Chinese industry. So, so again, you know, this is a good sign that, um, you know, potentially we're starting to see, you know, some broader rebound, um, you know, across Chinese industry. So something to keep an eye on as we move forward. You know, the other big macro thing that, you know, is, is going to be key is to see, um, you know, where we end up with on the, on the interest rate slash, you know, um, U.S. economy, you know, obviously a big job number print last week, which, you know, popped the stock market higher is going to slow down the, um, um, you know, slow down the, you know, the ability to cut interest rates. But as long as we see, you know, the economy moving higher and interest inflation not getting any worse, you know, then, then there were, and then we're in, in, in decent shape. Cause the, the reality is if, you know, if the economy starts to slow down, and which allows them to cut interest rates, then that's not necessarily the best, the, 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 you know, the best thing ever, right. You know, in terms of, uh, 
uh, in terms of metal prices. But you know, right now we're, we're in pretty good shape. Where you know, inflation is not getting you know, inflation's come down. It's not getting any worse, and we're still seeing pretty robust economic growth. Okay, and recently we saw. In fact, we talked about it last time at um, large premiums on sulfate prices. Is, is that still moving forward? Uh, it they've come down. I mean, again, I expect to see the, them. You know, by the time we get over the, the great convergence, them tr- basically trading at close to LME prices or at a slight discount. Um, with with the key intermediates, MHP and Matt, you know, trading in the in the low to mid nineties, um, they had blown out to very big uh, big premium again, which reflects the uh, this restocking that I've talked about. So people needed, uh, you know, they had not bought nickel um, for the supply, you know, the EV supply chain. They needed to get units, and and you know, we're we're in a bit of a push to get as much sulfate as they could. Um, you know, that's eased up a little bit, um, as expected, it can't remain uh, on the boil forever. And so, uh, you know, premiums did, did come back a little bit, but uh, I, again, demand remains uh, relatively robust. On the stainless side, um, you know, we've talked about this the last three or four weeks, you know, as, as strong as the EV market's been, the Chinese stainless market's been relatively weak. Um, we, we've seen week on week increases in inventory. Uh, those actually came off uh, last week um, pretty meaningfully for the first time in, in a bit. And we've seen stainless prices uh, start to stabilize. So that's good. Uh, you know, one thing that, you know, bodes well in terms of supporting the, you know, full floor prices here going forward is, is commentary from uh, the, you know, market research groups, you know, saying that Indonesia is still importing ore from, from Indonesia. Um, sorry, importing Indonesia is still importing ore from the Philippines. Um, and, you know, even though Chinese um, ore prices haven't budged, uh, the in, in the in, interior Indonesian price moved up by three bucks a ton or more than six percent. So and remember that you, you basically use uh, about over 100 tons of ore to make one ton of nickel. You know, so, a th- you know, three dollar ton, three dollar increase, you know, ha- has has increased the you know, price price of that, you know, you know by by four or five, per, you know buy an, another several hundred dollars a ton. So, um, uh, you know, the fact that Indonesian ore is this tight, uh, I, again, both well for as we move through the rest of the year. So we talked talk about um, OEMs needing to see access to supply um, to be able to manage their own inventory needs. But even uh, China, Indonesia, Philippines, they would love a kind of leveling and a slightly more a kind of a, a, a creative more measured growth here. It seems to be bouncing around at the moment. What is, what's going to change that? Uh, to be honest, I'm not sure if China, I think China is going to be in this consolidation phase for a while. Um, you know, they've they resorted to the same economic stimulus multiple times uh, to try and get the economy going. And, you know, as a result, you know, what that tends to do is, you know, you, you you have imbalances, always have imbalances in the economy, in particular in an economy that's grown as quickly as China. And then when you sort of <laughs> go back to the same levers, all it does is, is tends to exacerbate some of those imbalances. So, you know, we, we the, the, the Chinese property market has to get back into balance. The rationalization of industrial capacity across a whole range of, of products needs to occur. And that's not going to happen, you know, in a year or two. You know that this government doesn't have the the stomach to do the real things they need to do to to, to help uh, turn the economy around, and so uh, you know we'll 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 bounce around here for the next sort of five to seven years. We'll still grow, uh, the economy will still grow, um, but uh, you know you're not going to see that big big strong growth out of China. You will see again. We're seeing it out of India. We're seeing it in Southeast Asia again. So I'm not. You know, even though China's not going to be driving the bus to the same extent it was, um, you know, there are a lot more quote, buses on the road than there were uh, 10 years ago. Electric buses. Um, right. We <laughs> better. Big nickel batteries. Big nickel batteries. Um, big news. And relates to you know, something that you kind of started off um, all those years ago, which yeah. is a merger of equals, um, Corora Resources merging with West Gold's kind of, well, there'll be a spin co involved, but. What do you what do you make of that? Yeah, so announced last night uh, in Australia. Uh, so uh, good to see uh, you know, uh, Beta Hunt uh, continue to move forward. I mean, it's been a great asset. Uh, you know, where it is today is is what we expected it could be uh, seven or eight years ago. You know, the, the Steve Devlin and the exploration team have done a you know tremendous job uh, unlocking the exploration potential of that asset. 
Uh, West Gold has always been one of the natural suitors um, for the asset. Uh, the guy who founded that company, uh, you know, he doesn't have an active role today, but the guy who founded it, a guy named Peter Cook, uh, you know, has, you know, he he worked at Beta Hunt uh, when he started his career. Uh, we did, uh, we had a one potential transaction which didn't go through. We did another deal uh, to, to acquire their Higginsville uh, operations, which provided uh, Beta Hunt the mill that it needed uh, to be able to really kickstart itself up in terms of higher production, um, you know, and, and uh, manage its costs. So, um, you know, so we'll see the, the merger had a pile of synergies in there. I haven't gone into any detail and haven't looked to see, you know, where West gold is relative valuation wise, but uh, you know, they, they, they are, they were definitely one of the natural acquirers of this asset. You know, we'll see if anybody else uh, regionally steps in at this point, uh, you know, it's a relatively small premium, um, and, uh, you know, we didn't see a big move higher in West Gold. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens over the next few months before the, the vote on the deal. Yes, yeah, it's, it's interesting. I, I, I was with um, one of the guys when the the previous suitor, um, the, 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 the announcement um, was, well, the news came out in the middle of PDAC as unwanted, I suspect, by both sides. So it's um, questioning to see West Gold move in so quickly you know, the previous deal was on the table, I think, for, you know, six, nine months. And this one seems to have gone through in less than a month. Um, yeah, can be done if you've got willing partners. Um, go. Let's talk about Magna. How are they getting Yeah, on? so, so um, unfortunately, the, the morning we did our last call, I hadn't seen the release before you and I had talked. I don't think it hit the wire. Um, and, uh, so yeah, some nice results from the 109 foot wall drilling. Again, these foot wall deposits, uh, are, uh, you know, can, can be very, very high grade, uh, at, in the Inco basin. They're generally anywhere from kind of one to 2% nickel. They can be, you know, three to eight or 9% copper and anywhere from, you know, 10 grams to 30 grams per ton, uh, PGMs. And so, you know, they had a bunch of, uh, of infill holes, uh, in, you know, and resource holes uh, in their 109 foot wall target and had some, you know, great intersections. You know, what was nice was one of them was actually um, had some decent nickel grades, two and a half percent nickel, as well as 9.6% copper and 17 grams uh, PGMs over seven meters. So, you know, really good to see. Uh, you know, one thing with these foot wall deposits, you know, the way to think of them, if you basically took, took a, you know, a, uh, uh, a jar, you basically filled it up with some mixed gravel and then you poured um, liquid into it and had that liquid, uh, which sulfides containing nickel, copper and PGMs solidify, uh, you know, you end up with some fairly um, sort of, you know, sort of structures that, that move, you know, up and around. So uh, the, the thing with these deposits, uh, they basically can fall into one of three sizes um, and three abilities to mine. So uh, the thing we'll be able to, to see whether this is a, you know, a, a small foot wall deposit, a medium sized foot wall deposit or a large uh, foot wall deposit. And again, we just don't know at, at this point, but it's good to see the kind of exploration potential they have in these kind of grades, uh, the popping out of it. So, you know, well done to, to Magna uh, with those, those results. No, absolutely. And then, of course, everyone else is sort of, um, Getting getting ready and and uh, mustering their resources. So we've got some we've got some um, companies who also put out their plans for the year. Should we start with Talon. Yeah. So a, a couple of companies, you know, that that are yeah, again in terms of higher grade potential. Um, both uh, you know put out some interesting documents that if you're interested in these companies, I would I would encourage you as sort of must reads. Uh, so Talon basically outlined their 2024. Exploration programs, uh, you know, in terms of one, extending the, the additional resource, you know, but more importantly, some of their other, you know, key targets uh, in and around their main deposit, as well as the additional properties they picked up uh, in Michigan. Uh, they, they, they were able to get a big chunk of financing from the U.S. government to do some additional exploration. So they're very well funded to take up, you know, to, to really do, uh, 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 some exploration on this. So, um, we will see how, uh, the year progresses. But again, nice detailed, uh, press release outlining what, you know, what their plans are. Uh, the, the other group, uh, that, that, uh, put out some news was, was premium nickel and their Celebi, uh, deposit in, in Botswana. Um, there are two things. One, they put out some, some, some more, uh, resources. Sorry, more resources, more drill holes. Uh, again, j just, uh, I think the morning, uh, that we did our last call, uh, uh, some great infill numbers, uh, but, 
Uh, more importantly, they had some decent grades that look like they're extending some of the structures. So, you know, we'll continue to see, um, you know, how that plays out. Uh, they they held a webcast. It's about an hour long. Uh, again, very good uh, detail uh, in terms of what some of the potential looks like, uh, you know, for the deposit and, and the kind of targets they're going after. So, again, this is a stock you're interested in. I uh, would highly, highly encourage you to spend the time and, and listen to that uh, presentation uh, in some detail. Right. And um, anyone else other are catching the eye? Uh, you know, right right now, again, th- with, with you know, we've kind of, we went through the nickel winter. It was winter in, in Canada and a nickel winter from a nickel uh, market sentiment perspective. So, you know, not surprising, we haven't seen, uh, you know, a bunch of, of, you know, there wasn't a bunch of money raised uh, in, in the fall um, to do work. And so, you know, we're starting to see, uh, you know, that th- the things are, are relatively quiet now in terms of news flow. Um, and I, you know, expect that, you know, could t- continue for the, the next little bit in terms of broader industry. Again, for those of us, you know, like Talon, like Premium Nickel, like our, and like Canada Nickel, who've raised some s- substantial money for exploration, you know, we'll, we'll have the advantage that we've, you know, got a, got a bigger, louder platform, uh, to, you know, uh, to, we, we don't have to share the stage with as many companies. Uh, in terms of news over the next weeks. And and the good thing is, you know, as we said, we've nickel prices back up over $8 a pound. And if that's what a trough nickel price looks like, uh, I'll take it every day. 